What is going on people of YouTube and people that want to hear fantasy Premier League tips or at least me attempting to say some fantasy Premier League tips. My name is Kurt Yo and I am back for episode, well not episode, game week 8 review of my fantasy Premier League tips and tricks series. Now in the preview I hope to get a lot out this week. In reality, I didn't get much. That's because main areas of my team faltered. Notably, you might see a minus one on my team. That is because Sunderland really don't have a very good keeper. I'm only joking, but Renone had an absolute shitter. He was absolutely dreadful. Um, Sunderland were dreadful. And they really, really didn't do that well. And they managed to concede only eight goals. Eight, eight goals. That's that's horrendous, but that's where one of my um, players fell down on a minus one. Williams didn't get a clean sheet, which is hoping against of what I expected. I expect that to be nil nil, maybe Swansea snatching something. Ivanovic failed to keep a clean sheet at um, Crystal Palace. Also, Coleman was out of my team because at the time I recorded it and changed my team around, he was 75% chance. But from now on, I have a new tactic, which I'm going to talk about after I've talked about my players. Klein had a good week, six points, got a clean sheet, I believe I've got a yellow card. Oh no, four points for a clean sheet, sorry, um, when you're a defender. And also, Hutton, it wasn't meant to be in my team down there. He came in for Diego Costa, which is linked to um, my actual tactic. He came in, got me one point. On field was, I wouldn't say good, but sturdy. Got Fabregas and Di Maria getting me points. The other three were pretty below below average, quite standard, and Alawa got me one point because well, we played, didn't really do that well this week, got yellow card playing 90 minutes, it's faltered a bit, and I'm hoping he doesn't get any goals because I've got Swansea next, so he'll definitely be out of my team, and I'm hoping Swansea can defeat Leicester without conceding, but nevertheless, on to the team, on, I faltered mainly on the defence, I feel, because the goalkeeper and defenders were quite poor, only Klein got a clean sheet out of all my five playing defenders, there was Coleman as well, who when I saw that Hutton was brought in I thought I really could have done with that being Coleman, nevertheless it did not happen, but uh, yeah it didn't really go my, my, my way this week, I finally got my words out, and also I want to look at my strikers and my goalkeepers within my tran one al allocated transfer this week, just for the simple fact that I've only really got McGregor and a Manone and a poor one. I'm hoping he can get stronger. Um, I might take a risk on him come when I do my transfer. And also, I've only really got one decent striker that can consistently get points in Diego. Oh, Diego Costa. Sorry, I just held myself in from burping. And as you can see, the tactic I was talking about: automatic substitutions. But when if you have a player on your team that does not play a single second of the game, they will get substituted out with a random player, or at least I think it's random player from the bench, because on my bench I had Hutton, Zhukovic and Coleman, I thought it would be like for like, but I think it's just whoever's first actually, it might be whoever's first, so I might change that about to see if I can get the best player who I think will get points there first, and put it in order like that with the keep being on their own. Looking at the results, Man City 4-1. I wouldn't say shocked, but I'd say it's poor from Spurs. Arsenal result, 2 all with Hull was a big surprise for me. I thought that would be a nil-nil, and Hull would maybe be lucky to get a point. Everton winning 3-0, good result for them. Finally getting the win they needed to push forward. Palace almost grabbing a point against Chelsea was a big one for me. That really did surprise me. Um, Move down, look at Newcastle grabbing a point. I would say it surprised me, but I say it's about time for Newcastle's point of view. QPR just missing out on the points. However, it was like it was sort of the Masters their own downfall with that one, but they did deserve more from that. Um, maybe they could have stuck Fatso on the pitch. Fatso being Adele Tarapt. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look on BBC Sport on QPR's page, and you'll find out exactly what I'm talking about with that. <laughs> I find that quite funny what Harry Redknapp said. Also, we've got West Brom 
drawing two all with United and credit to West Brom they have really improved from the start of the season because I felt like the team they had and the inexperienced Premier League manager of Alan Irvin I thought they were immediate 20th favourites straight down to the championship however they've done pretty well um, they just didn't need a bit of time to um, sink in with each other I'd say and um, in the end now they're looking quite quite like, quite a strong team I'd say and I don't think I'd put them as my three to go down if I had to judge it on this point and of course we can't forget an upset without Southampton beating Sunderland 8-0 absolutely I'm um, gobsmacked absolutely gobsmacked that result but we need to look at the transfers now and we need to look at who I'm gonna bring out so let's move on to here one thing I do want to look at is the keepers first of all because keepers are something you don't need a lot of um, a lot of money for because they're all relatively cheap however I do have 4.9 million pounds to spend looking at that I could have brought Guzan in maybe I'm not too sure whether I want to because Villa have been quite poor recently if you look at his last three games 2-2-2 two, 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 which is pretty much just you conceded and there he's conceded quite a lot so that's why I didn't bring Guzan in Heaton is another one Burnley will get clean sheets and um, they didn't do this week, they haven't done recently they will get clean sheets, they will draw a lot but they're not. I don't want to stick any relegation threatened teams, defenders in my defence, that includes goalkeepers too but none of them really strike me out as players that I want to have in my team Pfft, I'm not really sure I want Lukaku in there, it's going to be too much of a risk and Spironi I cannot afford so Next port of call is straight onto the forwards. The reason I'm moving onto the forwards and not looking at my defenders on my field is because if you look at my defence, I have to play four at the back. I have Klein, Williams, Ivanovic, and um, Coleman, and they're four pretty strong defenders that can get you quite a few points. My midfield is really strong. I've got five players that could all take a spot in my midfield, whether it's be three, four, or five players strong. That is something. One player though who I would look out for if you have the money is Graziana Pella. He really has surprised me. I didn't think he would be the right player for Southampton. And the reason he I believe he is is because he's a lot like Ricky Lambert was and that's something that they had to fill in and that's something that I don't think Liverpool have filled in because when Lambert left um Southampton they brought a like for like player in which is Graziana Pele. Big um, good in the air and got a good um, sh um, strike on him and Lambert was big good in the air and had a good strike on him Liverpool lost Suarez now I know you can't spend 80 million pounds on a striker they did not spend their money on a striker that could get them goals Lambert was a good decision because it offers them a variation because now they have um, Lambert, Barini, Sturridge and Balotelli Barini gives you a bit of pace and allowed to go wide so does Sturridge and Lambert is the big tall one in, who's good in the air, the target man as you might say and I think the one thing they're missing out on at the moment is that goal scoring striker, the striker who may not necessarily do much for the team which although Suarez did do something for the team, they should have signed someone who was always looking to score, a bit like Jermaine Defoe, Jermaine Defoe if you gave him the ball anywhere from 22, 25 yards and inwards he would be able to make space, get a shot away, trouble the keeper if not score and that's something Liverpool have really missed this season but I'll move on to who I want to bring into my team if I get rid of Djukovic I can have 5.3 million pounds so first of all we're going to have a look at who is for the price underneath this now Stephen Naismith it's a tough one to bring him back in because he is doing well and last week, although he didn't have a good week this week against Aston Villa, I'm not sure he'll get the game time now with um, Barkley being fit, different players becoming fit. I don't feel like he'll get the game time that he deserves. Other players in there don't really strike me as ones that I want. Vyman and Abong Lahore I can't afford and I can't have. Shamak, Cole, Nugent, I've already got Djukovic. Fletcher, Campbell, Vardy, they're all players that I really don't want to take a risk on because it could come back to bite me incredibly hard on my arse cheeks. However, we will look at a lower that gives us £6.1 million to play around with. That's the best we can do with the sorting. Now, one thing I would look at is um, Nikita Jelovic. He is a goal-scoring striker. He is a, the player that you would want just of a higher quality at Liverpool because he given the ball and he will always trouble the keeper, he'll always look for space, 
he'll look for space, he'll try and make space, he'll get shots away and he's a typical poacher. Or they could say Sturridge is that, you need another one. The reason Liverpool was so good is because they didn't have one, they had two goal scoring poachers up front and that is where I think they have definitely faulted this season. But there's not really any strikers that jump out at me as such at the moment. Um, the only one is Jelovic but he is injured and Hull have Liverpool away next week. That is a big, big risk. I'm not sure whether I want to change anything yet. However, Berahino is looking out at me. I'm going to keep it lower. I'm going to put Berahino in. Just for the... Oh, I can't put Berahino in for him. Now I've got a decision to make. He's only got 8.5% and you'll definitely pick up points for him. He's a great goal-scoring striker. And he's good, he's young, he's very versatile around the pitch. Although that makes no difference whatsoever to whoever you bring in. I'm going to keep Djukovic and I'm going to remove a lower for Berahino because I think a lower has been poor recently. And I think the upcoming games, you've got Southampton away and Swansea away. That's games where I don't think they'll be able to get a goal, or many goals. And lower, I don't think we'll be able to get any goals in them. And West Brom at home, with West Brom improving by every game, it's a risk to have him in my team. So I'm going to bring in Berahino next week. Crystal Palace at home, Leicester away, Newcastle at home. They're three games where the teams have been quite... I'd say Leicester being the, exa um, the um, exempt ones, but they're all teams that you can get a goal against, and with a player like Berahino, you can definitely get a goal against them. That is the one change I'm going to make for this week. Looking at that, all the, pl all the um, matches, I'll review them, or look at them in the preview where I choose my team from the players that I've got. But nevertheless, that is the end of this episode. A rather long one, I'd say. Have a look at the time. Oh, my goodness, that is a long one. This has been a, quite a long time since I've done a long episode. But thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Subscribe if you feel like I'm worthy. And I'll catch you all in the preview of Game Week 9. Peace.